Okay, meeting, meeting called to order. Approve amend meeting agenda for tonight's meeting, Tuesday, October 17, 2017. Motion to approve. Mr. Chair, do we need to start the huh? recording? Is it going? Yeah. It is. This is Second. You're going to boost the button. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Approve the August 15th, 20, 2017 meeting minutes. Motion to approve. No more. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Number one, floor items, none. Number two, paved road evaluations. We've got uh, Hawkinson and Anderson at Shane here to uh, give us a road report, and he'll help us design a five-year plan to pre present to the uh, board. Shane, you're on. Okay, well, unfortunately, I'm still waiting for my computer to start up here, uh, and I have uh, probably about a ten-minute uh, PowerPoint presentation to go through. Really, just when I went out and, and looked at the roads, uh, I, got, I went out twice, one with, with Joe, I uh, once by myself, and I had taken some pictures. Um, so I just wanted to go through those pictures, and I had a couple other things that uh, I wanted to show you in the, the PowerPoint. So just give me a minute here for it to hopefully boot up. Can I ask you a question? Sure. On that rolling hill, what was wrong with that road? Rolling hills? Yeah. Uh, which is over here off of Wall Street? Yeah. You know, really, what's, what's happening is it's just weathering. So, uh, pavement, when it's new, looks something like this. This is actually a core that's about 10 years old, but it's been stored inside my office. So when it's new, you know, pavement is a mixture of rocks, sand, and oil. Mm -hmm. And when it's new, the surface is smooth. Uh, you know, you still have the, the oil and the, the sand in that surface. And over time, what happens is the... Dries out. Yeah, yeah, you start losing the oil at your surface, and you start losing the sand, and you expose the aggregates. And so when we start getting to that exposed aggregate situation, you have a brittle upper layer of pavement, and you know, just it, it, the road's not as strong as it once was. Okay. So, you gotta get your mic on. No. Gotta be green. Press the press the uh, bottom one. Button. You want to get those for him? That's one thing that you know kind of concerns me when I look at our system as a whole. We have a lot of roads that were built in those 1990s, the late 90s, early 2000s. And all those roads, we have a lot of miles of road that are approaching 20 years old. And if we don't do something relatively soon, those roads are going to you know, begin showing pattern cracking, alligator cracking, and, and essentially they're going to start falling apart. And we're going to have a situation where we have all these developments and all these roads that were constructed in about the same decade. And, and really, they're going to come to a point where they have to be reconstructed all about the same time. Um, at that point, I, I doubt the city will have the financial resources to keep, those, keep all those roads paid if, if we end up in that situation. So... Should we get 
Um, so it's like Burns Parkway and, and, and roads that don't necessarily go uh, cut across the county. Also, since you mentioned that, um, this, oh, oh, let me just, I'll get, remind me to get back to that in a minute. I just, just, you know, when we met with the county earlier this year on the comp plan, they did have in the 2030 some of those roads that you mentioned they were planning to turn back, which they hadn't gotten around to yet. Right. But they'll likely be in the 2040 plan, and they'll roll those over and they had some of the documents in the 2040 plan. Initially, they had an informal agreement that they're waiting until we get to 5,000 with the NSA. And the previous county um, board understanding was roads would be in decent shape when they get back. So we have to immediately repair the road we've got to maintain it, which is maintenance budget for right. plowing and shoulder and everything else. But we do need to factor that in as we're looking for potential five year opportunities. Right. Yeah, I think that's probably beyond the five year term of this plan, but it is something <coughs> that is, is going to be coming up in the not so distant future. So really there's there's two major categories of improvements that were considered. Uh, one are overlays. Uh, and you know that's that's gonna be a, quite a common practice. Uh, overlays add structural strength. And I, one of the reasons I brought this with is just to kind of show you guys how substantial an overlay is. So this is probably closer to a two-inch core, but and we've rec recommended two inch overlays in some cases, but I mean, you can tell that there's definitely some structure that goes along with a, an overlay. So it's a structural improvement. Um, it extends the, the pavement life. It's going to improve your ride. You know, I like overlays because they're relatively quick. The construction time frame is usually one to two weeks as opposed to all summer, and they're relatively low cost per mile. So. Overlays are a great strategy if they're done at the right time. You know, we also consider roads that need more extensive repairs, such as a reclaim or a reconstruction. Um, these type of repairs should be considered if there's a large percentage of pavement that doesn't fail. There is a point when the overlay is kind of throwing your money out the window because it's not gonna classes as long as you like it. Um, you know, a reclaim or reconstruction project is going to have a much longer time frame. Some projects can last all summer. Uh, definitely a higher probability of change orders. Usually you're dealing with unforeseen, you know, you just can't see underground. And so uh, generally what we try to do is, is, you know, we give the contractor direction on what we want them to bid on. And we, we, our direction is, you know, we don't want to over-design this road because we're going to pay a lot of extra money and not necessarily need it. But you, you do almost always run into areas of soft soils. And so we should keep that in mind when we're scheduling our, our projects that if we started right off the bat with a major project, there's a higher probability for change over those type of projects. Shane, do you ever do like a kind of a war test or anything in areas that are suspect? Kind of get an idea what might be in the ground and how deep it could be. Absolutely, yeah. Every time you're considering a reconstruction project or a reclaim project, we would recommend soil wise. No, when you're talking reconstruction, you're not talking about always an overlay, right? No, reconstruction we have a more major project than an overlay. So reclaim it, you tear up the surface to a base level put material on the top. Correct. Reconstruction, you take it right down to the grade. To the right. Re re normally with the reconstruction, you're also removing the reclaimed aggregate and rebuilding the subgrade. Um, what, what happens, and I, I'll get to that in a minute also, is, is your subgrade becomes soft. So if you have a lot of cracks in the pavement, it's a conduit for water to get into your base, that water makes your the clay or the or silty sand or soil uh, soft, and if you don't go back and, and dry that out, 
it, it really doesn't firm up again. So, you know, pavement is considered flexible. It can deflect a little bit without cracking, but it can't deflect a lot. And so if the, the, the sub-base below it is, is soft, you're going to have a shorter life out of your, your pavement. What do they call it when they put the oil down and paint it on it? That kind of... Oh, seal coating. What is it? Seal coating? Oh, is it seal coating? Right, or chip sealing, some, some call it. Yeah, the yeah. parking lot over here is chip sealed. Is that good? Good thing to do, or is it black, or what? A <sighs> uh, couple years ago, I would have said, yes, absolutely. Um, seal coating is great, because really the, the most important thing with seal coating is the oil. That kind of, you know, rejuvenates the surface, and when it dries out and you lose that oil from the surface, it, it replaces that oil. Um, and then the... The whole reason for the rock is really just so you can drive on it right away. And then, because uh, if, it was, if you put that thick of a layer of oil down without the rock, it would be slippery and there won't be any skid friction. So, but that, that helps the surface from degrading. We haven't done a lot of seal coating, or we haven't, we've seal coated one development that I'm aware of. Um, and right now there are some a lot of cities with roads built in, say, the mid-90s, maybe even earlier, it's generally associated with a, a certain mid-dot bituminous mix, they're having problems with what they call delamination, where the, the surface is just coming off. And it's, they actually think it might be attributed to the seal coating that's sealing the surface too good, and then there's moisture getting in from the bottom, it gets trapped in in the wintertime, it freezes and expands, and it, it kind of goes over the surface. So, right now my recommendation is, if you've had a, a seal coat program and it's been working for you, continue. If you haven't been seal coating your roads, this is probably the best time to start. Can I uh, add something to that, Gene? Sure. I've been doing a little research on that, Al, and uh, what I learned is seal coating a parking lot, that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. But seal coating a road, isn't, isn't it real good because of traffic? And what, what I've learned is there's a kneading, I think it's K-N-E-A-D, or K-N-E-E-D-I-N-E. -E -E there's a kneading, like kneading putty in your fingers. There's a kneading process that goes on with a lot of traffic. Uh, so they don't recommend seal coating roads. Yeah, but, uh, I guess the, the research in the state actually doesn't support that. Um, right now, the, the recommendation still is for chip sealing or seal coating for, for local roads or uh, county roads. Yeah, I might be getting this from southern states or something, but sure. the one thing I didn't talk about, and one of the things I read was uh, like snow plowing. Snow plowing will chip away at that seal coat and cause. Yeah, but normally the, the snow plowing only removes the aggregate on the top, which isn't really that concerning to us if the oil is still present underneath. And there's much more than just oil, isn't there? I mean, there's, there's, uh, is there chemicals? I mean, it's not just an oil, sand, and aggregate. There's much more to the mix. Yeah, there is. I mean, there's polymers involved. And, right. 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 Yeah. So some of those things are going to factor in in some of this, isn't it? As far as the longevity of the road surface? Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, regardless, I think I'm just about probably to the, the slide where I talked about exposed aggregate and weathering, but um, the, the recommendation still is to, to see the both roads. So, just a quick, you know, I, I, I pass around that uh, pavement core, maybe you didn't get all the way around. But as you can see, that surface is, you know, it's, it's pretty tight on the top, it's smooth. That's what a uh, roll looks like when it's new. And then, when we talk about exposed aggregate, this is what we're, we're talking about. So, that layer of oil and sand is done from the 
surface, you're starting to expose an aggregate, and you actually start to lose your aggregate all the time. The aggregates pop out after they, and once they get about half exposed, there's not a whole moment, there's not a whole moment. You know, I have to hang it, there's going to be making it about rolling in. Yes. Ready? <laughs> yeah, the other thing that you'll notice about pavement that has aged is that it loses its black color at the surface. Instead of being black at the surface, this is pretty gray, uh, which indicates that a lot of that, that oil, pretty much the, the UV rays that uh, weathering that removes that oil, but you know, that, so that surface without the oil gets kind of brittle and, and it doesn't have the, the oil of the, the binder to hold everything together. What do you know about fog seal? Fog seal is. Fog. Right. Fog, yeah, fog. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. Fog seal is the same concept as seal coating. It's just a thinner application rate, and you don't put the, the rock in. So they, they're doing a lot of fog sealing of like all the interstate uh, shoulders mm -hmm. right now, and there's actually that uh, this uh, guy that works for the, the Mintot. We've got the Tumas Laboratory, he's kind of a seal coating expert. Mm -hmm. And because of the cities that are having these big problems with their seal coated roads and the delamination, you say, well, if you don't like seal coating, you should at least be fog sealing your roads. So, you know, fog sealing, since it's a thinner layer, it doesn't last as long. I've, I've done a couple projects where I've chip sealed and then fog sealed on top of that. And that's nice because it, you know, whenever you chip seal a row, you have a loose aggregate for the next couple of years. And that kind of helps prevent that. Mm -hmm. But it seems like after two or three years, it kind of burns out. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't last as long as that thicker layer of oil. We talked about uh, the local government officials meeting sometime back. And the local county was saying that they fog seal high Traffic high speed roads because they got tired of paying for check police shields. Oh, sure. But they, they do the, the um, um, chip coating on lower traffic, lower speed roads. So residential areas, they're doing the chip seal, chip coating. They're using the fog on the high speed. Okay. The price quicker, they don't have the traffic. Yeah, well, the fog is actually. It takes a while to set up, um, and it depends on the temperature, it depends on the humidity, and most of the time it sets up within an hour or so, and, and, and while it's setting up, you can't allow traffic on it. So that's always the problem with our roads, is you can't just shut them down, because you might have 30 residences on that property. Um, and we had one project over in Otsego, where we chip seal and fog seal, it was almost just on the right combination of temperature and humidity, but it, it took all day for that to set up to the point that they let traffic on it. And then when they finally did let traffic on it, you know, at five o'clock at night or something, it was still tacky, so tacky that it pulled all the crack filling material out of all the cracks, and there were ropes of, of crack filling material all up and down this this major collector city road. So that was their last year of fog sealing after they chip seal. But it does help protect the pavement. So failed pavement, this is what we talk about when we when we say that the pavement has failed. Uh, you know, it's severely cracked, and all these cracks are conduits for water to get down into the, our aggregate base and saturate that base. And so the longer we leave areas like this, the more water we get into the aggregate base, and the, the, the more likely that water is going to get down and saturate the subgrade, and it's going to cost more to, to rebuild the road or repair the road in the future. So this is just kind of a graphical exhibit of when we have a, a crack and it's a direct conduit for water to get to the base. In fact, a lot of times you can go after a rain and you'll notice that the pavement's always dry right next to the cracks because the water gets sucked into the cracks. 
Um, but that's the, the area that dries first. And what happens is when you have a, a load, uh, usually it's your heavier vehicles that do the most damage. Um, but that the aggregate base is soft. Any material, when it's super saturated, becomes unstable. And so that pavement above it yields and eventually cracks. In the wintertime, we, it's pretty common to have days where it, it warms up to above freezing. During the day, you have snow melt, runoff, that gets into the cracks. Uh, and then it, it gets cold again at night, that material freezes and it, it increases in volume. And that puts upward pressure on the pavement. Um, but you know, we, we spend a lot of money in Minnesota on our roads. I think it's like $600 million on, of state money each year on our roads. And back in, say, the late 60s, somebody said, hey, we're spending a lot of money on our roads in Minnesota. We got to do some research to make sure that we're put, you know, getting the most bang for our buck. And that's when they established what they call the Local Road Research Board. And so every year, $3 million of that funding, it's one half of 1% of our state gas tax, goes to the Local Road Research Board. And they've, they've done a lot of study in the pavement and a bunch of other things that affect roads. And this is kind of the typical deterioration curve that they've determined. And what's interesting about this is, you know, while the road's new, it stays and pretty darn good condition for a long time. In fact, uh, the first 40% drop in quality happens over 75% of the payment's life. So if you have a road that stays in the last 20 years, that first 15 years, you're only going to see that first 40% drop in quality. And then the next 40% drop in quality, I can't see this very well, happens over 12% of the payment's life. So once it starts deteriorating, once you start getting cracks in the pavement, once the surface is dry and brittle, it, wrap, it deteriorates at a much more rapid pace than when the road's new. Most of our roads, I would say, are in this band. So we don't have any new roads anymore. Probably our, our, our newest one was the Salt Street, which was done in 2008, but that's, uh, you know, that's going on 10 years old now. And so another interesting thing, one dollar of renovation here will cost eight to ten dollars of renovation if we wait. So when we talk about saving roads that are worth saving, this is what we're talking about, is trying to do the repairs while they're up here instead of waiting until it falls down here where we're likely not to do it for it. So I did mention the local road research board, and I just printed off a couple copies. This is what all the research projects that they did in 2016, but there's, there's quite a few of them. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting stuff, and I'll leave, I don't know, there's a couple copies, I think, on that desk over there, and we'll leave one here. So this is a... A chart that was also included in our 2012 street study. And this kind of just talks about general cost per mile of different treatment methods. So our routine maintenance, that's our, our crack filling. You can see that that's so small it barely even shows up on the on the bar chart. Uh, preventable maintenance, that's gonna be uh, seal coating, uh, you know, probably twenty thousand to twenty-five thousand dollars per mile. Our structural improvements, this is when we start to get into our overlays, uh, $150,000 per mile. Reclaim and, and a reclaim and overlay project might be $300,000 to $400,000 per mile. And then once we get up into a total reconstruction, it can cost anywhere between $600,000 to $800,000. Well, so again, we can do it per mile. We can do a lot more roads at this cost per mile than we can at this cost per mile. And so this is kind of, you know, over the last 10 or so years, 15 years maybe, this is what a lot of the engineers in the state have been presenting or trying to uh, discuss with their decision makers that instead of you know, using a standard 
pavement deterioration curve. Let's try to do our schedule maintenance on a routine basis and try to keep that pavement in good condition for as long as possible so we can extend that pavement's life up to 30 years, maybe 40 years, maybe longer. We're not sure yet because we really haven't been doing an aggressive pavement management program in the state for long enough to know. Okay, so with that, I just wanted to give you that little bit of a background. Um, these are actual pictures of our road, so this is 185th Avenue and Clifton Road. What I see here is, you know, the, the, the surface isn't smooth, it's gray, so we have that exposed aggregate, the, the surface is getting drier and brittle. Um, yeah, it still rides pretty good. Uh, you know, some of the some of the transverse cracks on a lot of our older roads, they're settled, there's a dip there, you can feel that dip when you drive over them, so that affects the ride. Uh, but we also are getting a pretty high frequency of, of cracking. And generally the cracking, you know, continues as the pavement goes on, and you know, as you have more cracks, especially if they're unmaintained, um, you know, it just expands at a pretty rapid rate. Another picture, 187th cliff in here, where we don't have quite as frequent of the cracks. That's probably a normal cracking. Uh, this is Jasper Street. Jasper Street's in decent condition overall, but it had kind of one area that had some, uh, we require some patching prior to the overlay. Uh, the rest of it looks like this, but it's, you know, it's, you can see in the pavement, it's, it's, dry, it's brittle, and you can see some kind of micro cracking. If you really stop and get out and look at it, um, these are not the only cracks, these ones that are, are pavement, but they're not the only cracks in the pavement. There's other real small cracks that are starting to develop. Uh, this one is Garnett Street, north of North Lake Road. So this was installed by a developer, I want to say in the late 90s again. Uh, there's one area, you can see there's some elevator crack in here. Um, that hasn't been patched yet, but there's another area that pretty large patch has been completed. So, I mean, this, this one is a perfect candidate for me. It's, there's hardly evidence that there's areas that that failed or you could have used that additional structural strength. Um, this is the, the Meadows of Verde Valley development. Again, kind of the, the same thing. Pretty good condition, pretty good ride still, but it's, you know, the, the pavement's definitely showing its age. And if we don't do something soon, it's you could start to see more cracking. This one's Prairie Brook Estates. This is kind of up off uh, to the east of Zenon Street. Here we have Gypsy Valley Road, Tungsten and 213th. This road is kind of similar to Jasper. This is one that I think might be on our MSA system at some point. But you can see with the, you know, there's a lot of cracking going on there, and we've done a good job of filling them, but um, it's signs that the road could use some additional strength. This is on 213th. There's kind of a, an area that's the pavement has failed. That would have to be patched before doing an improvement. Uh, this is the Rolling Hills development. Off of Boss Street. See some higher frequency cracking. Mark number 1.5 instead of a 2H. 1.5 is kind of a standard for a local road. And so that's what we recommend in most situations where there's not a lot of cracking roads that. When it's a, a road that's more of a collector road, it gets more traffic. Or if there's some more signs of distress, 
there we'd recommend a two inch. And these, these are all, up until I think Pinnaker Lake, these were over, or all the developments were recommended for an inch and a half. So this one, the surface looks different because it's been sealed over, and there's not a lot of aggregate left, but you can still look at that road and see the oil is still there from the, the seal coating. So it's still, you know, what was that seal coating, maybe in 2000 or 2001? So 17 years later, that layer of oil on the top is still protecting the surface. And in this road, the surface has not dried out like the rest of our roads. But it's hard to see the, how does it seal coat it? Um, I don't know the entire history. It was before, it was when my predecessor, John Harbour, was the engineer. Do you remember something about the, an issue with the two layers of asphalt not bonding properly or something to that effect? Um, but I'm not. Negotiation. This is hard to see from probably a distance, but one thing I really want to point out in Pinnacle Lake Estates, we're getting some pretty extensive pattern cracking. There's a crack here, a crack here. Um, a lot of the road looks like that. So that's a sign that the road is near failure. And really, for Pinnacle Lake Estates, and I think the other one was in this category was uh, 184th Tiger. If we don't construct an overlay soon, we'll be looking at the next level of repair. Uh, this next one is Krypton Street in Ford Brook Estates. Um, there's a, about a 300 foot segment of road that has been breaking up or been bad uh, for quite a few years now. Other than that, the, the first few hundred feet and the last almost seven or eight hundred feet are actually in, you know, structurally pretty good, but this, this middle roughly 300 feet would require a pretty good patch. Uh, 184th Avenue and Tiger. Here you can see it's, it's seems like it's more on the north side than it is on the south side, but we're getting you know, a lot of pattern cracking uh, or the beginning stages of alligator cracking. So again, if we don't do something soon on this road, this, we're going to be looking at the, the next level of repair. Another challenge with 184th and Tiger is there's no shoulder. So if we were to construct a two-minute overlay and raise the the road, when we try to shoulder it, it's it's hard to shoulder with plaster and see that it tends to, to wash out right away. So to get a gravel shoulder in there, they're just not being ruined. So at some point, I would think there's going to need to be some uh, earthwork done. But I would think we would focus on kind of the low hanging fruit before doing. Uh, more expensive projects like that. So now we're kind of in the, the next class of repairs. This is Waco Street, Waco Drive, all the, the roads in the Rocket Lakes area. Um, I don't recall what the rating was, but when we first started looking at these roads, I don't even know if it was 2008 maybe with that 2008 road study. 2008. 63 yeah. Degrees. Okay, so they were in fairly good condition. And at that point, we were recommending an overlay. Now, we think that they, an overlay is probably not the right um, treatment. Just because they're deteriorating to the point where something more extensive is needed. So, Some discussion about constructing an overlay on Old Lake Boulevard for the past 
couple of years. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out on this is you know, we have quite a bit of rubber in this road. So we, we have quite a bit of depression, but we also have a lot of crack sealing material. If you look at these pictures, the road is kind of in the tray on the edge of, of do you uh, construct an overlay or do you uh, do, wait and do something a little bit more major? And one of the factors that, that I would take into account is the funding mechanism. So I, I, I did an overlay on a road that looked similar to this uh, probably five years ago. And, you know, one of the problems that we ran into was this, this rubber, the wax on material, and when, it's, when it gets really hot, it turns into a liquid. So it's, they, they heat it up to 300 degrees. When they install it, it's a liquid form, and they, they use a shoe to put it in the crack, and then it cools and it turns into this uh, pliable rubber. But when you pave an overlay, that mix is also 300 degrees, so this material turns back into a liquid. And what we have, what happened on that road was every place where we had a lot of rubber, we had, you can see it's a kind of a discoloration at the surface. We had a bump there, just a little undulation in the, the pavement. And you know when they rolled it with the roller, it, it went act the same as the, the rest of the pavement. And so when we got done, we had a brand new road but with bumps every 15 or 20 or 30 feet. And I would caution against doing a, a project or ass assessing the residents, and we, we might expect uh, not a perfect um, result. So our last one is Ebony and Garnett. Uh, there's been quite a bit of work done here over the past two years, and I think for the most part, a lot of the problems have been taken care of. Uh, I talked to, to Joe about this, and instead there's still maybe one area that needs some repairs before an overlay or something could be done to this. Um, there are a few areas where the, the pavement, you know, probably one of the earlier patches, there's, there's already some cracking starting to occur on that. And so, oops. That's a, I mean, this, this one's hard for me to um, give a recommendation on because in the, we've already in the past done an overlay on a more extensive repair, should probably should have been done. I mean, there's, there's minutes from public hearings and right around 98 or 99, somewhere in there, where there was kind of two options. There was a the less expensive repair, which was basically an overlay, and there was a more expensive repair. The residents chose the, or the, the town board at the time chose the less expensive option. We've really been dealing with the problem on that road since. Um, but a, a two-inch overlay would add strength and would help extend the life, you just might get to a point where you levy an assessment and you know we, we hope it extends the life of another 10 years and as soon as they're done with that 10 year assessment it needs to be reconstructed again and uh, here comes up another assessment. These roads I didn't originally include I don't think on my list of roads to review. These are off of Jasper's and the loop that's north of uh, Ebony and Garnett, and that's the Jasper. I just happened to drive one while I was driving Ebony and Garnett. Um, these are in pretty rough shape, and because they would need such extensive repairs, or they didn't make the list for recommendations within the next five years. Um, so with that, now I'm going to get into the, um, probably looking at the map and the, the preliminary estimates. One thing that I do want to stress is these are, they're just, Estimates based on the average cost per foot. So we didn't, for each project, try to determine or estimate quantities, and uh, you know, that'd be a lot more work effort. And so before any project moves forward, or even before we we nail down our 
funding for a specific year. There should really be a project specific estimate prepared. And like we talked earlier, if it's a, a road, like the roads in the Rogers Lake area, um, possibly a couple areas in, in Old Viking that are slope sliding, we might want to do some geotechnical explorations so we can kind of help uh, refine those costs. So, kind of what I have in mind, um, you know, I, I have a big map there. I also brought with a bunch of color copies of 11 by 17 that you guys can look at at your desk. But we really, I mean, first of all, we have to have some idea of how much is the right amount of money to spend each year. If we have 200000 in the budget for 2018, I'm not really sure if that means we, we would have $200,000 available or $400,000 available, let's say if we're going to assess 50% of the cost. If you were going to do, say, a $400,000 project and assess 50% of the cost, yeah, over a, a period of time, we would receive that revenue back, but in the interim, we run into a, a kind of a, a stumbling block on, on financing. You know, there's, there's always prepayments, and it seems like there's more prepayments to lower the assessment amount. But that's a difficult thing to, to predict. So another option might be we, we use the $200,000 and use that $180,000 to kind of fund the resident share. Um, but then you would have to figure out what to do with the, the next year. Maybe a better way of saying that is if we keep in mind the resident share, assuming say a 50% assessment, and, and so that would be with a $200,000 bud city budget each year, that would be $200,000 assessing each, each residence. Over the next five years, we need a million dollars in the bank to kind of cash flow that without going to the bank and borrowing money to cover the portion that's going to be assessed to the benefit. Um, you know, we have to talk a little bit about the criteria that we're going to use to prioritize the roads. Do we want to do the, the roads that are in the worst condition first? If we do that, we're not going to we're not we're not going to fix as many roads. Um, also, if we do that, one of my fears is that. Our other roads that are in good condition five years from now are going to be in not so good condition and it's going to the problem's going to keep on getting worse and worse. Um, and then I guess that towards the end we can uh, determine if there's any roads that kind of aren't on our list that, that maybe should be. And one thing that that we always tell our city councils or town boards is that you know, these capital improvement plans are kind of a work in progress. They have the highest uh, level of accuracy one or two years out, and as you get towards the end of that five year planning period, it may not be as accurate because you have your needs change, maybe the roadway condition changes. You know, you originally thought that the pavement was going to be good enough for an overlay, it, it, it changed conditions, and now it's a, a required a, a reconstruct or something of that nature. But the capital improvement plan should really be reviewed each and every year and then updated to include the next year. So, and then our recommendations tonight will be provided to the city council for their consideration. So with that, I guess I would recommend that we need to go back to the, the tables. I have a big map here. We can uh, just kind of go around the, the map and look at.
Plus he already printed it. Yeah, I got a copy in there. Okay. Maybe I didn't need to bring them. But... Well, I don't know if there's really a good way to, to start. Um, well, if anybody has any other suggestions, I think maybe we'll just kind of start at the top of the, the map and, and work our way down. Um, you know, the, the first, so the furthest to the north project is Garnett Street in Miller Lake Estates. That was recommended for an overlay. That's a road that I feel is worth saving. It needs a, a fairly small patch. Um, before a roadway could be constructed, it also has the tuminous curve, which makes things a little bit tricky when you get to the catch basins, because now you have to adjust those catch basins and raise them up, but uh, that's nothing we can't uh, work out. Directly to the south of that, our next street, the old pond, that's, that's in better condition. So that, while it would be great if we could include it towards the end of our, our five-year plan, it's not as high of a priority, I would say, as, as our next street for the north. Does anybody have any comments on, on whether or not they you feel that our next street for the north is will be a priority in the next five years? Between these should be done in the next five years, one to five, where would things fall in? Like sure. You're saying the, the south end of Garnet there, you're saying probably would be a five. Because it doesn't have to be done right away. Right. Uh, uh, another thing you gotta stop and think when you're doing it that when you get roads that close together. It's cheaper to do them together than splitting them apart. Yeah. The other deterrent is its price tag, 540000 
if we do that project and we only have $200,000 per year, this is our only project we can do in the next three years. Um, you know, if we were prioritizing by traffic, Old Viking would probably, would probably be at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. Old Viking, probably Jasper, maybe 185th, 187th. The problem with prioritizing by that is the, all these projects are the higher price tags, and that's all we'll be able to do in the next five years. Meanwhile, the roads up here in Pinnacle Lake Estates, they're going to go, they're going to probably need a, a reclaim or a reconstruct. Uh, you know, some of these other roads will start turning in that condition. And while we're sitting here trying to figure out how to deal with those roads, then we'll have all the, the next batch of roads that were constructed not too long after that starting to be in the same condition that those roads are in now. So, you know, keep in mind we still have Bailey Estates that was constructed in the 2004-2005. We have Wild Run East and West. Uh, we have this large uh, Autumn Acres, Jensen Pine Woods. Um, you know, the, the Bogley developments up here, Milestone Ponds. We have a lot of other roads that aren't even, we're not even looking at yet that are 13, 14 years old, and they're going to be knocking on our door pretty soon. Shane, can I ask you a question here? Sure. Um, this one here. And this one here, right? Yep. Would these both be here? And, and, and let me tell you why I ask. Okay. As I count the uh, boxes with the dollar figure in on, on your map, I get 15 projects. But on here, I come up with your, your highlighted, I come up with 14. So I'm just trying to figure out if... So the one that's not on there is the Scarnet Street here. Not, not. It's not in the. It's in not any the of this portion, right? None of this. Right. So there's 15 yeah. projects. As of right now, what you've recommended and put together, 15 projects. Yeah. Th this this Garnet Street and Oak Pond. I, I think that one is in fairly good condition. You know, I also drove. Uh, 215th and Waco, that's kind of the same condition. I think we have higher priorities than those rows. So, so both, both kind of are on there. Excuse me? You have both the 114 and the 32 on here. Okay. The last two are 215th and Waco and the one in front of them. And they're on that over pond. Yeah, and that was my question, is the, the, the Ebony and Garnett and then the Garnett Oak Pond, did you consolidate those under this one highlighted area as Ebony Street and Garnett Street? So there's Ebony and Garnett, and then you also up towards the top, Yeah, you have the 114,000 is Garnett after Jasper on, well, the page is not numbered. So I get, I get this here, Ebony and Garnett Street? And I get Garnet Street Oak Pond. And there's See one that? Up, right? And there's one Are these two consolidated? No, they're not. And they're there. No. There's three, three Garnets on there. And, and all I'm trying to do is relate <laughs> these paragraphs with your dollar boxes. Okay. That. So this Garnet Street in the Oak Pond, this one is the 32,000 right there. That's yeah. this one? Yep. This 32,000 goes with that 32,000. That's south of North Lake Road. Oh, it's already in my. So that's this oh, one. Oh, you got them all right there. And then this one, Morton Farm, you know where that is. And this, I'm going to get this. That's 80,000. You work with other cities about our size, right? Well, here's the one in here. How much money do they put away per year for road improvement? Okay. Um. So last night I was at Credit River Township. There are right around 6,000 people. And they, they, they bond every three years 
so that they never have more than three bonds outstanding, but basically they bond to pay their resident portion. So they'll spend five or $600,000 year one and year two, and then the third year, during the bonding year, they'll do more work, and uh, we have two $700,000 projects and then one overlay project for next year, so it's about $1.5 million. Um, you know, Linwood Township, also, you know, just in Anoka County, I think they're at 400000 per year or somewhere in that ballpark. We kind of did a lot of this type of work for them. In the, What's their population? They're about the same, I think, 4000 Now, the bonding... Are they a little more? Okay. The bonding, though, you're go that's going to be paid back by the residents, right? You're assessing on... on no? No. Not just a loan. Yeah. Well, there's different ways to look at it. I mean, if you, uh, you know, again, if, if, if we're levying $200,000 each year, well, 50% of the project costs are going to be, I'm just using that, the council hasn't determined that number yet, which has been generally discussed, but let's assume that 50% of the project costs are assessed to the benefiting properties. Okay, there's nothing stopping, if you have 20 property owners, there's nothing stopping 15 of them from paying, paying that assessment off before it even gets on their property taxes. So, so now you, you, you only get a $200,000 project, but you know, 15 out of 20, I don't know what that would work out to be. Let's say, let's say $150,000 in revenue came in from the property owners, well, maybe you should have done 350000 that year, you know. That gets difficult to determine, and that's usually like a, a financial uh, planner. I think we had Bruce Kimmel from Ellers uh, in not too long ago. That's kind of what they look at to help determine a, a financial plan for that side of things. So my question, Jane, is which roads are deteriorating the fastest? Can't you answer that? Of your 15 proposed projects here, which ones are deteriorating the fastest? Or is that tough to answer? Look like all of them. I would well, obviously look. they're all deteriorating. <laughs> yeah. But which ones are in high speed? I think these roads are here in Pinnacle Lake Estates, and then maybe down here in uh, Tiger and 184. Pinnacle Lake Estates and uh, Tiger and 184th? Right. You, you would say those are the ones that are deteriorating the fastest. Correct. I think they all, you know, most of our... I mean, they're all family. We know that. Right. And then it's really just due to age. It's, yeah. it's yeah. you know, most of these roads are, are, are approaching 20 years. And it's about the life cycle of payment. I, I was just going to say, that... that the best of my knowledge is the average life uh, expectancy of a black top for right. 20 years. Right. You can extend it out um, with seal coats and overlays, uh, but you know, if, if you don't seal the roads and you don't overlay them, you're not going to get a whole lot more out of them. Well, so maybe all of what we should discuss in, in the future, don't necessarily have to do it now, but I mean, uh, Maybe we should should come up with a uh, twenty to twenty five year plan for all the the thirty. What do we have? Thirty nine miles of paved road right now. Thirty seven, I think it was. Because so. obviously, in twenty years, it ain't gonna be us guys sitting here. No. Thirty four you know. paved, twenty nine ground. Thirty four paved. Yeah, that's uh, the city did an inventory that's included in this in this 2012 street study, and that's where I got these totals from. It's just a little bit different than what we call on our website, but you know, each each of the road has its length and then at the end everything's totaled up and it's okay, 34 yeah. miles. 
we have a five year graveling plan that we discuss several times a year. A couple times a year, something like that. Well, a five year so, plan here, you'd have to do at least three of these projects <coughs> each year, wouldn't you? Well, I'm looking for something that we could put together that future uh, committees and future councils have something to follow. Yeah. You know, we heard this one uh, city or township doing a bonding every three years. And that's specifically for their roads? Correct. So that's a plan they have in place for, uh, for uh, addressing their road issues. Right. Sounds pretty simple. This needs some discussion. Okay, you can't get nothing done in five years, so we're going to go out 20 years. <laughs> well, you just work we got to start here. somewhere, Joe. I mean, it's been saying that for 20 years. Just too. looking for a plan here. I'm not, I'm, you know. You could always, always adjust that plan, too. You know. Well, sure. But in all, and the things we discuss as far as equipment and, and uh, gravel and, uh, yeah, uh, what else? We we got regular things that we discuss that are on in a plan. We never ever talk about paved roads. There's no We plan. haven't talked about paved roads in twenty five years. <laughs> Where have you we been? We have no plan for paved roads. We've been working on a plan for twenty five years. Let's, let's get we got a five year plan here. Let's get something started. Yeah, I really think that's where we're at here. I, mean, I, I, did a, I started out, I did my first road study in, in 2008. Um, I did another one in 2012, and then I think I wrote another memo in, in 2015. Yeah. And, you know, so really we, we, we've done quite a few plans, but really it, it's, I mean, in my opinion, we need to start identifying projects and implementing them, even if they're small projects. One thing that happens when you do projects you know, people notice. You know, I, I have oh, a, absolutely. I have yeah, a friend, sure. I have a, a relative that live yeah. in Alden. And, you know, I'm sure you guys have friends and relatives that live in, in the city. And, you know, you talk to, when you go to your, their house and if you see a new road, people learn kind of how right. and, things work. And I understand what you're saying, Joe, for sure. And, but guess what, what I'm saying is just like exactly what you're explaining there. People see you out in the grader, Joe. They know that the roads are being graded. I mean, we, people see culverts being replaced. But how often do people see the blacktop roads being addressed? Well, I think what you got to do is start small like with this. Sure. Then it will yeah. snowball. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's start yeah. small, then think about the 20-year plan. So, so last night, I had three assessment hearings for the other township I was talking about down south. And when I started out one of their assessment hearings in 2008, I mean, these, they were three hours long. It was, you know, resident after resident, they would get up and, and yell sure. at me and the board, uh, talk about how we haven't maintained their roads for the last 20 years, they should pay a higher percentage, and you know, just, they were really unpleasant. Yeah. Last night we had three of them, so each one was about a half hour long. No one opposed the projects, so no one said we don't want this project. And, and the highest assessment amount was thirteen thousand nine hundred. So, but they just know that's what they do. That's what the town has been doing. It's been doing it for the last ten years. Right. And and I've been over to my friend John's house. I've been over to my relative's house. They have a nice new road. I know they were treated the same. And that's the big thing when we get into to doing projects. Yeah. Is the residents know that they're being treated the same as the, the last project, and that you're also going to treat the next project the same. And when they, they start thinking that after this year, maybe a little 100 percent city funding, yeah, they're going to say, I don't want this year. Right. You know, right. change it now. Right. So I think I, I just I really like that idea, Dan, about the the other city that just regularly bonds every three years for their roads. I mean, that would have to be something worked out in the city council. Is that, budget, different? Is right? that different because of their population and how that affects them? Well, Ellers was here um, not too long ago, and they, he actually did a, a you know, if, if the city were to do, a, I think, a million dollar bond, the yearly bond payments, 
I want to say we're around 130,000. Does everyone, anyone remember that? Uh, I mean, he, he did kind of a schedule for the, the city. Um, you know, that seemed fairly reasonable. That seems very reasonable, I think. I mean, I think this council can work that into the budget. So, Shane, do you see, just on that in general thing, do you see us being able to catch up here down the road? Well, like Joe said, you know, if we start... I, mean, I understand that, but and you're, and you're no. talking about getting, I guess, the public to buy in and, and right. then you have your short meetings and all that stuff, but, I mean, is it possible that... I mean, it seems... It, it, it seems pretty bleak right now. Yeah, I mean, I think... I think when we... When we first did, like, uh, Linwood Township's five-year plan, it took them ten years to complete it. Um, but then... You know, after a while, it gains traction, and it's just, it's easier to, to keep the momentum going. And you mentioned something in your presentation about maybe the same city. They, how did they cash flow something, you, you used the term cash flow. Was that the city that bonds every three years? Oh well, yeah, that's, that? that's a difficult part. If, if we go forward in a method where we assess a portion of the cost, which I would recommend because that allows you to go yep. and bond for it. You have to assess 20% of sure. the project cost. Otherwise, you can't bond. You have to go get certificates of indebtedness, and they're they're uh, not as good of interest rates. And, you know. and, and I remember, I got to interrupt you for once. I do remember very clearly that our attorney said each project is unique. So how does that play into this financial side of it? Um, that's usually addressed at the feasibility stage of each project. So. Generally, the, the council says this, you know, we're looking at, at this project for next year. It's going to be an assessment project. The first step that's required is a, a feasibility report. Um, we take a, a shot at uh, estimating, the, you know, estimating the project costs and then allocating those project costs to the residents. And then the city council looks at it and determines if it's fair and equitable. Um, so explain the cash flow and... <laughs> Thing that you talked about. Yeah, well, well, yeah so again, um, let's, uh, you know, let's say there's 20 property owners and they each are assessed $10,000, right? That's, that's $200,000. Yep. Okay. And we also levy $200,000, right? Levy or bonding? Well, so or either I, or? I'm, I'm going back to kind of the whole picture. I mean, at some point we have to determine, do we do $200,000 oh, okay, of know projects okay. each year or yeah. a little bit more? The, sure. the challenge you're saying is if you assess half of it, the $200,000, you you're not getting the $200,000 up front. Right. So if we have 20 property owners and we assess $10,000 $10, each, um, you know, that would be like a $400,000 project. Sure. 10 of them might prepay. They might pay us before the end of the year. So... Hence the cash flow? Hence, yeah, and, but, then, but the other 10, they, they might not. So, yeah. so then, we'll get paid back over time, over a 10-year period. We still need to pay the contractor yeah. and the other project costs. We need to determine if that remaining $100,000, is that going to, is that what we're gonna use? You know, right now, I think we have 188,000 saved up in our road improvement fund. Are we going to use that kind of as a revolving bank? If that's the case, it's not big enough. We only have enough money right. by, for one year. Right. Year two, it's, we're going to run into a different challenge. So, um, so we need to increase that fund, probably. Yeah. You're saying somehow you'd have to, if you're, if you're assessing, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're assessing, that money's not coming up front, so you got to figure out how to float it. Right. Some, some of it might, but right now it's. Right. But, yeah. but yeah. you can't, you can't predict it. You can't expect it. Yeah, every project's yeah. different. It, uh, sometimes you have a real high percentage of prepayments. Other times, you might have zero. Yeah. Well, there's always somebody. But, um, so even if you assess more, even if you if you if you levy more. That's where you were going to go. That's where I was going to go. If you're, if you're going to levy more, then what are you going to do by levying more? 
Are you still going to assess to pick up another project or are you going to use that as extra assessment for your float? Yeah, and that I would recommend like a Bruce Kimmel or somebody from a financial planning firm. They should be the one kind of guiding the city in, in those decisions. I think for tonight, all we need to determine, you know, what do we think is the right dollar value? It's probably at least $200,000 per year, maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Maybe as close, up to $400,000 per year. Well, if you're saying you're thinking the, the two ones that are deteriorating the fastest are, that's 250000 right there. Right. So let's just focus on those two again. Because another thing that I think comes into play is, you know, how willing are the property owners to pay an assessment? Um, you know, I think up in the Garnett Street and more like estates, those seem like they're a little bit larger homes, a little bit bigger homes. Not always, but a lot of times they're willing to, you know, the, the larger homes or the, 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 the higher tax value properties are willing to pay more for road improvements. Um, you know, sometimes it's a challenge if they're if they're too nice and there's a bunch of attorneys that live in the neighborhood. It generally goes the other way. <laughs> I've I've had that before too, where. Um, but you know, it, it, that comes into play too. Garnett Street, or I'm sorry, uh, Pinnaker Lake Estates, I mean, to me, that's, that's one that they can see the, the damage starting to occur. It should be a pretty easy sell, and it's something that needs to happen right now if we want to save the road. That, to me, is one worth pursuing. Um, 184 from Tiger, I don't know. That's, it's a little bit more complicated for me because you know it doesn't have the shoulders. It's kind of hard to you kept it. You can't, we're we're going to end up probably not addressing all these projects in the five years. So we're going to end up having to pick some that get done and some that maybe don't get done. Well, we got to get our feet wet somewhere. So, yep. so these numbers are they pretty pretty close to use? These figures. Uh, I mean, it depends. They, they're they're based on an average cost per foot. So, you know, I think Krypton Street. I took the average cost per foot, and then I added thirty thousand dollars for the patch. I'm just. Yeah, want, they, they, I just wanted to say yeah. if the town board would send notices out to say Garnett Street. Well, no, we. We would not send notices with those numbers yet. Okay, I just wish I was one. We, these numbers just are good just to see to if they up. would be willing for an assessment. That's why I was wondering if these numbers were good enough to tell them that the numbers. Oh. You know what? My opinion is you only have one chance to, to gain the trust of the residents. And if you go in right off the bat with the bad information or not the right numbers, right away, uh, Okay, that's why, that's why I was asking. Mm. So, you know, All right. one thing that you can do is, I, mean, I, 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 I do this also, is you have, you call it a neighborhood meeting, just to kind of get the flavor of the residents, you know. Yeah, the only you bad know. thing about that, the first question we're going to ask, how much? Yep, and you tell them we don't have the, the number yet. Um, but, you know, just so you guys know, at a 50% cost split, the the assessment hearing that I had last night, there were like two and a half acre lots. It was 3,200 per parcel for an overlay. So it's and it's a a good sum of money, but you, you think about it, you can't pay for your driveway for 3,200 dollars, um, and most residents realize that. And the assessment's well, over. We dump all 15 in a five-year plan. You know they're not all going to get done, right? Right. So that would, whatever we didn't, we could shift into, it had to go into another five-year plan. Yep, you know, and, and that happens too. I mean, 
Sometimes you have them on the schedule. You have the, the first public improvement hearing. And like I said, I've had a situation before where there's like three attorneys that, that live in the neighborhood. They all come in and say, there's no way we're paying this assessment. You should have done more maintenance. You should have done this. You, you know you're going to have an assessment appeal. So you don't even spend the money going any further. You, know, you say, okay, well, thank you very much for coming. Um, you know, we're going to... We're not going to go forward with the project when we feel like there's going to be a chance for an assessment appeal, and so we're going to look at the next project. So, Shane, you recommend Pinnaker, and what else? <laughs> you know, I, I think if it was solely up to me, I would. I, Probably do the the lower hanging fruit. The so I would do Pinnaker Lake Estates in 2018, and then I maybe do like a, a Garnett Street or Krypton. Yep. Um, Your estimate on Krypton was 120. Was that there was a little bit of work. Right there at that intersection. Is that including that yeah. too, you think? Ballpark is? You know, I just ballpark $30,000 for okay. that patch. Okay. Yep. Um, I think it's probably pretty close, but it's one of those deals where the, the thing that's a little bit scary about Krypton is it does need that big patch, and it's been bad for a long time. There might be a, a bunch of really wet clay down there, and that could have the possibility to, to, yeah. to spire, you know. In your opinion, when, when, what year are you going to get nervous about Old Viking Boulevard? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I'm nervous about it already. <laughs> okay. But the thing that, I mean, the, my thought on, on looking at this map, we don't have any other funding mechanism for Pinnacle Lake Estates. We don't have any other funding mechanism for Garnett Street, for Rolling Hills. Um, you know, all these developments, and so it makes the most sense to try to preserve those roads, new projects while they're the, the lowest investment, because we don't want to be in a situation where every project we do is a neighborhood reconstruction where there's an assessment of twelve to $15,000. Those are tough projects to complete. We, we will someday have other funding mechanisms for Old Viking, for Jasper, 185th and 187th. For that reason, I would delay those projects over my other local neighborhood roads that are, are really showing their age. Our state aid local roads, 
And so we don't have a smooth north-south route. We have a, a shaft or sea and a piece of lightning and it goes over. So this would help deter the, the cut through traffic. Um, and then also give us a nice good north-south route. And that's right in the middle of 566. talking about, or, or you were, we were here, we're talking about Pinnaker Lake Estates, we're talking about Burnside Trails, correct? Correct. Why do you, why do you recommend a two inch overlay on Pinnaker Lake Estates and only an inch and a half on Burnside Trails? You know, that's a good question, it's probably a typo or an oversight. I, really, I think Burnside Trail is not ours. Burnside Trail should have a, a two-inch overlay. Burnside, Burnside Trail is not even ours. What's that? That's a county road. No, the 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 development. Yeah, the development. Oh. Tiger and 185th or 184th and Tiger Street. So you, it's got to be a, a typo. That's, yeah, that's that but that, the issue though. There, there's no there's shoulder. Right correct. There is a, an issue with that. The hundred thousand doesn't take that into account, right? That is correct. So for that reason, if I was going to think about delaying the project, I would maybe delay that project until you know we do something a little bit more major and, and fix the the ditch slopes and you know at least get a, a one foot shoulder on either side of the road. So we could start with Pinnaker Lake Estates. And, and okay, Pinnaker Lake Estates in 2018, is there some consensus on that? Yep. About the Morrison Farm, you put that on there, you get a lot of homes in that development, smaller amount, but again, potential for success with more residents. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I don't think it's needed as badly in Morton Farm Preserves as it is, as it is in some of the other developments. Morton Farm Preserves are pretty similar to Garnett Street, south of North Lake Road. I'd like to see it on the five-year plan, maybe towards the end of the plan. But it's, it's, we have other roads that are showing a lot more exposed aggregate then. So, Shane, what would be the next step then? Pinnacle Lake Estates, if we're going to jump in and get our feet wet here, what would be the next step? Does well, the city council have to give you the go-ahead to come up with more precise figures? This one and this one. Yeah, I think, I, think that our, has to happen? I think our first step would be to try to, you know, we're going to take a shot at what year we think these projects should be done. And then I'll do the more precise figures only for the road projects that we're thinking about doing next year. <laughs> Well, let's let's stay focused on your yeah. Pinnaker Lake Estates. <laughs> and you were saying Krypton for 2018. Should you use one? My next recommendation would be Krypton yeah. or Garnett Street. 
I like our next street better because yeah, I do too. Because it just needs a little money. patch right here at the or whatever at the here. entrance. Whatever. I'm not as worried about opening up a can of worms. Krypton Street. We can't take. There could be a can of worms, but also they've been dealing with a road that has been in bad condition for a lot longer than. So let's just pick on Pinnacle Lake Estates right now. Your estimated cost is $155,000. Right. True. So $77,500. Would you, Dan, as a city council, would you guys contribute $77,500 of city funds and then assess $77,500? If that were the true figure of one hundred fifty-five thousand, would you split that in half? Seventy-seven thousand five hundred dollars, I believe, is the half. Uh, would the city pay half, and the you'd, have you'd to go for an assessment on the other half? You'd have to at least assess twenty, I think, to do it. But right. potentially, you'd at least have to assess twenty. I, I mean, we've the percentage we've thrown out at council meetings that if we were to do an assessment, I mean, it could be anywhere across the board. I mean, I think it was just. 50, so, a 50, so, 50 disc, you know. so here's where maybe it gets a little tricky then. Mm -hmm. if, if we go after this project and you assess 20%, right? And then the year after 2019, you go to a different project and you assess 50%. Now you got residents going, hey, why did you assess me 20%? And then the other guys over here yelling and saying, well, they assessed me 50 Geez, right. how do you address that? Now, that's where Sean, Shane made the comment about that you kind of got to keep treat everybody fair and kind of do the same. I would think so, yeah. Right. You know thing, Perry, you got to keep in consideration when you start doing these numbers. When you assess, you have to have the attorney and the engineer involved. Yeah. Yeah, these, I mean, th these numbers that are presented are total project costs. So they include engineering, administration, you know, they, they include overhead numbers based on past projects. So sometimes, you know, you sell bonds, just doing the bond sale might cost thirty or $40,000. Um, and that's included as a project cost. That's so we need to get the experience so that you know how to go forward with this in future years and how to deal with it. Well, and, I mean, I would say there's no reason that that a 50% assessment couldn't be recommended to the council that that's what we, you know. I think you should start with. high, and if you want to come down low, that'll come, to, you, can, you can always come down lower, and then the snowball effect, like Joe says, is really going to get going. So, and, or you can always stay at 50%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think. Can you assess more than 50%? You can. In fact, in the past, we've assessed 100% of project costs benefiting property owners. Um, you know, I think that. Is there any state I mean, people's in your law anywhere in there that says. The state law says that you can only assess the value, the increased value that that project improves of the property. So, in order to assess 10000 you have to have an appraiser that will say that increase the value of that house or property by ten thousand dollars. Right. And if so, it doesn't appraise it. on overlays. Yeah, very difficult on overlays. If you're going from gravel to blacktop, you can pull that off. Yeah. If you're going from blacktop to blacktop improvement, you know the assessed value can't be more than the so with that being said, that would make me believe you'd want to keep the assessment low. Probably half. Yeah. And that's basically what we've been struggling with is, okay, what if, if we have that in the picture, you know, what is that, what is that percentage that you can do? Well, talked about an overlay, you talked about going from gravel to blacktop. You know, can you categorize some of this? Or a reconstruct? reconstruct. You probably can't get it on a reconstruct. Same thing, you're going from blacktop yeah, to blacktop. Black 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 yeah, it's still right. apples to apples. Yeah, and so. then the other thing that, that becomes difficult, you know, Pinnacle Lake Estates or, or projects 
Um, I mean, even like Rogers Lake, there's a lot of density. And so the, the more, you know, if you have five homes in 500 feet of road, instead of one home in 500 feet of road, it's, it's you know, the, the assessment's proportional. Where you get into to higher assessments, it's going to be like on Jasper, you know, which would be nice to do, but that one, we have a, a bunch of undeveloped hay crop. And so, right out the bat, the assessments shoot up because you don't have the units. Well, and there again, it's like the attorney said, every project is unique. Right. So, and projects like that might be worthwhile looking at doing a little bit higher city yeah, percentage to keep those assessments about yeah, the same amount. We got left, uh, so the city year. council and the future city councils need to have an uh, explanation to residents why some are assessed this much and why some are assessed this much. You can't please everybody and you can't be fair to everybody. It just isn't going to happen. No, we jump in, get our feet but how can you uh, explain it to them that assessment? You know, you got to assess twenty percent. That's the engineer's responsibility. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, that answers that. Make a motion right now. Make a motion. So you know, I, I've also you also get at assessment hearings. You know, my driveway is only thirty feet in off the road. My assessment should be less than the guy at the end of the cul-de-sac. Because he has to drive on the home road to get to this house. And you, you, your response at that point is, you know what, we came up with a, a method that has to, you know, it's, we, yeah, it doesn't take into account every little situation, but overall, the whole, fair, as fair and as equitable as we could come up with. Mm -hmm. And that's just our policy. As long as there's some consistency with that message, you know, over, over time, that seems to get work. that down. Consistency in your explanation. Yeah. Well, if I remember right, yeah. having a, a track record of successes helps. Right. Which again, you know, so we haven't talked too much about Rogers Lake area, and that those roads down there, they need some improvements. Probably, you know, worse than a lot of these other roads that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's there's some great problems. There's it's going to be a higher assessment amount. My recommendation is let's do some smaller projects that are almost guaranteed successes first, kind of establish a track record. After we've done that for two or three years, maybe we tackle a more difficult one. I mean, the, I, I, the cost from this one is probably going to go up a little bit, but not as, you know, it's not going to, not going to entirely change like, uh, say, Pinnacle Lake Estates, if we don't do that now, this is going to turn from 155000 to probably 500000 You know, right. It's going to be a, a big difference. Who, who determines the improvement to the property? Because that affects the assessment. So, if the city wants, we can hire an appraiser to, to go out and, and look at it and give us an estimate other, other of what they think the the increase in value is, but ultimately it's the city council. They have to make the determination that this seems like a reasonable amount to assess the property. Uh, I think Bob, the attorney, always says that assessments are always assumed to be valid unless proved otherwise. So the anybody that wants to appeal the assessment has a burden of proof and they would have to prove that it's not valid in order to object. Well, the, the basic argument would be the, the value improvement, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. if, if I'm a homeowner, I'm saying, well, you're assessing me this much, but I'm not getting that much extra value out of this. Sure. I had that fight recently, in recent years, in Edina. Because in, in the suburbs, they, they just assume they have a multi-year plan and your neighbor's getting done. Yep. And my folks in Crystal was $10,000. Well, in Dinah, they went and actually they have a bunch of lawyers and they challenged it. They said, you proved to me my house just went up $10,000 in value because you, you did my curb and gutter. Yeah, you Dino was, I think they were still assessing 100% of the project costs. So they were higher assessments. I think that one and was around 15, residents, 15 or $16,000 per. If 
I remember correctly, when uh, uh, Burnside Trails was reconstructed, the roll went to pieces after what, about three years? You know, after the development got completed. So, went to reconstruct, and they excavated all the uh, bad soil, took that all out, and built that road. And that road is not bad. It's, it's actually a pretty good road. That's uh, down here, Tiger yeah, Bird, Birdside and Trail, right, right, right next to me. Okay. And I'd like to check the records to see, but I'm pretty sure there was an eight thousand dollar assessment fee per parcel, mm -hmm. and they paid all of it. Sure. And there was really weren't any complaints on it that I can remember when we were still township there. Right. Eight thousand dollars. Yeah, we did a lot of assessment projects. Um, I mean, we and did, John Harwood was involved with that. Yep, so you guys did that one. You did 185th, 187th in Clifton. You did Jasper. You did Gypsy Valley, Tungsten, 285th. Yep. I'd like but to that make a was motion. completely reconstructed. I mean, they, they motion. executed a lot of Bill, are you saying there's some uh, history here and now then of assessing these projects then? Yeah, sure is. Okay. You bet. I misunderstood something on our, our last we had, meeting or two then. When we were township, that, at that point, we were still assessing 100%. Well, Salt Street, uh, Bill and Allie Welling, the whole B&B Welling over here, they wanted that road done so bad, they made a donation to the city. About $80,000, yeah, something like that. Right? Yeah, it was, yep. it was a big chunk of money. Yep. Um, and then on top, yeah, I think they paid fifty thousand dollars. On top of that, they were assessed three units at ten thousand each. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion here that we put Pinnaker on for schedule for work for two thousand eighteen. For the recommended work that uh, Shane is recommending, it, uh, second. present it to the council. No, I'll second it. We got a second. What percentage? Pinnaker. Huh? What assessment percentage? Assessment. What percentage? 20. 20, 25? 20. 25. Assessment. You always go down. Are you sure you want that figure, Joe? Do we need do we need to put that figure, Joe? Yep. What figure? I don't want to count it wrong. 20 or 25? <laughs> 25. 25. You don't want to be higher, huh? No. Nope. You were talking about 50%. Yeah, because no. you can always come down. No. See, now you're going to create the arguments so as we move forward with other projects. You just said about yeah, 15 minutes ago you want 20 percent. If we if we choose a <laughs> yeah, and I'm a little worried about you know if we're at 50 percent to come together, we're going to end up with a little bit higher assessments. All right. We're going to have more money, so we're going to be able to do more projects each year. Right. You know, All right. go down to say 30 or 40 percent. The assessments will go down a little bit, but we won't have quite as much money to do projects each year. So it's it's going to be kind of a hard, well, hard hard sell at a higher, yeah, higher assessment. Might be a good. Yeah, I, I think a lot of cities that do a lot of reconstruction projects. I mean, the somewhere between that thirty and, and forty percent is pretty. It usually generates numbers that are pretty palatable. When we start getting up to assessing 50 or 60 percent or more, the numbers get really large, especially for the reconstruction projects. And you're just starting out, so. I don't think you should go high. 20, 25 percent? Steer people away. It's a good one to get your feet wet. Yeah, you get our feet but, wet this way. But mm -hmm. Dan, ultimately, it's up to the city council to. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, I don't know that tonight we were, uh, I mean, that was one of our tasks was to figure out the assessment percentages. I think the, the council will probably appreciate our recommendation, but um, really I think what, what our goal tonight hopefully was to identify some projects for a five year time frame. So. What I'd like to see is get one project underneath our belt, just see yeah. what we got left over. So we can get a plan financially what we got to have. So the consensus, just let me ask a question, would the consensus be to just do one project, which is Pinnacle Lake Estates, 
in 2018 and, and no others? Right now, we got 200,000 to play with, right? We have 188,000 in reserves. In cash. My understanding is $200,000 by the end of next year. By the end of next year, we'll have $388,000. Add more, Joe. Yeah. No problem. I, I, can add. Add. <laughs> I, I think we can tell Don't, don't mean we got to spend it all. No, we don't spend it all. Why not? I think we just need to get our feet wet and see how it goes. <laughs> When I consider going what about project. Krypton Street? I, yeah. I, I brought that up earlier. That's pretty straightforward. Other than the patch. Yeah, 120. How about Garnett? I mean, you're in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. you mentioned Garnett, Garnett I think. Garnett up here? Yeah, you're in the neighborhood. Yeah, I, I like Garnett because it's so easy. Uh, Keep from the right together. perspective, mm -hmm. you're spending all your money in just this one little area. Yeah. Well, you have to be a little bit careful about that. Right, but I mean, always. I mean, it's cheaper to do it two together than spread them apart. Miller Lake is up there. I think if we do something up here, then the next year we should, you know, oh, right. have right. something somewhere else. Yep. But right. So, so, so should we add Garnett? Garnett Street is a, would be a good project. Yeah, I mean, and that's the one in Miller Lake Estates. Right. Miller Lake Estates, yep. So there's yeah. some agreement. Yeah, I mean, Garnett for 2018. Doing. Okay, <laughs> Should, should we vote on the motion and then add a, and then have another motion? I thought about it, but yeah. Well, we didn't vote on that. Yeah, we'll right amend it. Yeah. We'll amend the motion. Yeah. Who, who right. seconded it? Uh, Did somebody second it? Phil seconded it. Oh. Second. Yes, I did. Yep. So we want Henry Kerr and Garnett then? Yep. Right? Yep. This one and this one. Right. One and two. So is that the 114 and the 32? No, uh, 155. Just the 114. Just the 114. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't get greedy. Yeah. <laughs> Al, do you want to, do you need to amend that? Or do you, we haven't voted yet. No, no we haven't voted yet. So you can amend it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Al, you gonna do that? Amend it? I'm gonna amend your motion to add this one. What are you getting? Yeah, amending the uh, motion. We're, add, we're adding Garnett to Pinnaker, right? Yeah. Yep. Garnett. For the year 2018. Miller, Miller, Miller Lake Estates? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Second. Second, Art? I did. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. I do Krypton and Ebony and Garnett. They're together. There's 140 and 120. Joe, do you think a two inch overlay on Ebony and Garnett is going to hold that one together? I believe so. I like to see the cul de sacs heavier. Okay. Two and a half or three inches in the cul de sacs on all. All of our dead end roads. And then there's, you said there's still a repair that would have to be done before? I would, now I think two inches would probably hold it together. My personal opinion was that if it was my road, I would tear it, I would dig it out. It's not that big of a stretch. Okay. So that, that estimate, I mean, that road for repairing that isn't, doesn't yeah. include yeah. Yeah. Out how big an area that is. Um, but that, yeah, this one here. Oh, that's one. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. Let me. Without the overlay, do you think that road probably will not hold up for the? 
next 10 years or so? No, no, it needs to overlay. My, the, the only thing I worry about this one is, again, I think we need some successes, and this one's already not, you didn't hold up once. And so the two inch is going to add strength, and it's going to buy us some time, but we're not going to want to do a bunch of destructive testing or you know, soil borings again to find out what's... Because that already had an overlay on the whole thing. No. Uh, we've done several different a lot spot of repairs. Yep, so, Pat patchwork. Yep. And it looks pretty good. I mean, it's a, it's a heck of a lot better than it was four or five years ago. I don't know that it's, I don't know what's under there though and how long it's going to last, you know. By 2019, you should be able, we should be able to tell if it's going to start walking again. Okay. Yes. Is there some consensus with Debbie and Garnett for 2019? Just use this one. Did Isaac? I think so. I think so. I think so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're thinking Ebony and Garnett in 2019, yeah. along with Kirkland. and yeah, and Christian. The city's not used to paying that in. Which one was the other one? Ebony and Garnett, right? This one here. Ebony and Garnett. Yeah. The other one is Kirkland. Yeah. The cost I, of I would do it before that way you have the one winner okay go through a winter freezing okay. thaw. So 2018 is gonna be these two projects probably plus the last repair to have your net. Yeah. And then 2019 would be just doing the two inch overlay. Right. I mean I like that that you get, get to see a free stop yeah. before you spend the money overlaying it on it. Make a motion on it. I don't know, you want motions on the years or how do you want to do it? Let's just put together a plan. A plan. Okay, no. Yeah, you can do it. Uh, we can wait to <coughs> do it. Let's see. Okay. This is just a five year plan for you. Okay. And then make a motion. So now we, we don't have rolling oaks in here yet. And Meadows of Verde Valley, both of those roads are still in pretty good condition. And they really, should, in my opinion, should be our next priority. Okay. These two here? Yeah, so it would be Meadows of Verde Valley, which are, is over here, 120,000. And then the Rolling Oaks, off of Boss Street. 2020? 2020. Right. That would be in 2020. Right. All these residents here. Twenty twenty. Well, they're getting uh, paying the bill. Right. This right here is twenty twenty, right here. That'll be starting. Pretty middle. Yeah. Yeah. One of these residents, twenty five percent, is what we came up with. Isn't it paid? That bill. Okay. So that's right. year that we're going to pay. That's what you got for twenty five percent. That would be the third year of our twenty five years. Right. Thirty year. Ninety seven. Right? $97. Jay, oh. I got a call. Yeah. Here it is. Right here. City goes into this residence. 2020. Say it's one fifty five. Now you charge the homeowner 25%. Okay. Who gets that money? Nobody. City. City comes back to them. The assessment. The assessment, yeah. Over 10 years, their assessment, the amount you assessed, would come back to the city over 10 years. Right. But so that makes that bill city's, lower. The city's yeah. not, no. The city's not money ahead. No. no. The city's just recapturing what they spent. So you're saying oh, right, 160,000 right. 160, yeah. right. and 20%, yep. 32,000 of that is being assessed. So yep. the city has to come up with that ahead of time. Right. But you're dividing that assessment among the parcels. Correct. But he's not right. getting 
properties, 3,200 bucks over 10 years. Right. Let's look so at the how city many properties be, are in there. So the city would be paying it out up front, but not getting paid for it for up to 10 years. Correct. Well, right. So in other words, you get the money back. Wrong there. 25%. I think so. That's what I'm getting at. Should be doing. But it's not. You don't really get it. But, you, but you're not getting it back because you already paid. You're getting, you're getting reimbursed for it. Yeah. Yes. So, exactly. so I'm, I'm getting my like, work on 21. You're getting reimbursed. Like 25 properties yep. in there. Yeah. And so if we assess this one, this 20%, one, 20%, one, 20%, we want to try and bunch them together. Yeah, but you get a better deal if we put them together. Be cheaper, if you do these two together, and these per two parcel. Together. Per parcel. Yep. I feel that's pretty affordable, mm -hmm. maybe even on the low side. That's what yeah. I think. So, yep. Yeah, I'd say these two, and then it, later these two, right? But, yeah. Saying there's a talk here about uh, uh, combining those two right. on the. We do. See the eighty thousand right. above there. Um, about where? On the right side. Uh, there. Uh, over here. Yeah. yeah. What if we did that? What if we had that for twenty twenty, just to keep them together? And the one twenty, where are uh, that? Uh, you could I mean? Well, to me, it'd be I don't think it's gonna make. We'll maybe save a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks if you know if they only have to jump from here to here. It's not going to be a, as long as they're already mobilized into the city. It's not going to be a huge additional cost. It's something, it's something to consider if you're trying to to build some PR with this. Like in the first year, if you wanted to do one north and one south, you've got people talking. You're talking about. Something's happening. If you're doing everything up north, nobody in the south, nobody's doing anything. And there's not really a big advantage of having you put them proximate to each other. You have more positive publicity. Something's happening because two portions of the city are being up. Yeah, but if we do one at the north and one at the south the next year, what's the difference? I'm just saying that in 2018, you've got. People in the south and the people in the north see something going on. Right. 2019, you see people in the south and people in the north see something going on. So, right. so if you do something on the west and something on the east, north, say go northeast to uh, Verde Valley, mm -hmm. and uh, southwest to Rolling Hill, you've got north, south, east, west all seeing something going on to see the equipment going on. It builds some of that. Positive. There's things happening. There's an awareness. Mm -hmm. it's not have, so you, have you figured up what this cost? The total in five years? Uh, I think I did. I got it all up, but I don't have it. Did everything, everything on the map? No, no. you can't do. You can't take out Old Viking, Jasper, and 185th. Right. So, if you take those out, you're at uh, one six sixteen a million six hundred sixteen. Divide that by five is what? Three oh, just over three hundred thousand. Three so can we get twenty? Mm -hmm. How much? Three twenty a year. So yeah. can we put three twenty a year in the road improvement plan? It's something that can be needs to be looked at every year. I mean we're not assessing mm -hmm. we're doing the levy for twenty eighteen. The preliminary plan for 2018 has been. Man, we're having a hard time. We have fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars to put in it. Now we're talking three hundred twenty, three hundred fifty thousand. We're at two hundred for next year. You're a little short. Keep in mind that we might assess a portion of the project cost. Right, but I mean you're assessing it over a ten-year period. Mm -hmm. Right, comes into a cash flow problem, but. So you're gonna be short every year. Maybe. Year after. We assess 25 residents, 1,240 bucks. There might be a pretty good chance that oh, right. a, lot of, we'll pay. a lot of those residents pay cash. Well, I'm saying we're having a hard time putting fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a year away. You know, we're talking three hundred and something. Well, I think you know, remember part of that is because we, we didn't have a plan and said we had a plan since so we came to the city. I give you a plan. Shane gave you a plan. Three or four times. What were you going to say, Mr.
Mr. Mayor? You were saying something. I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but I mean I don't mean to be rude, but we've had plans. Joe, because it hasn't been this specific. Hell, I haven't. It. It's a three million dollar plan. Do something. And why we we've engaged Shane, why we've done what we've done here is to get specific so we can say in year one here's the three hundred thousand dollars, in year two here's the three hundred thousand dollars, and we now have a feasibility study that says this is a reasonable plan. There's a reasonable assessment, so we get a portion of that paid for over an assessed period. And I gave you a plan a few uh, years ago, five-year plan, how much you need per year. Where's that plan at? So you're sitting here telling people you don't have a plan when you did have. That's what pisses me off. But you don't want to put, I say you don't want to put, we haven't been putting enough money away for road improvements, and we know the roads are bad. And here we are now, we got a halfway plan. Now we gotta to put more money in it. All right, and, and this year, in addition to what we had, in addition to what's coming from the state, which last year they, they told us we're gonna get $130,000, which didn't happen because the state couldn't get their act together. They said we'd get that this year, we got half of that. But we're getting something from the state, even though we're not 5,000 in population. We get to use it on any road we want, not just state aid roads. And we put in $200,000 into the budget. Well, I understand. I mean, that's a 7.5% seven, seven increase. The money from the state is great, but you shouldn't even consider that into your budget. That's we just did. a bonus. We did. That's, that's going into the pool. We put in $200,000. Well, well, we can well, schedule. Al, I mean, we we're can getting, schedule. We're, we're, we're getting something done. Was, we kind of recommended to Dan here to bring something to the council. At two hundred, was it, or what did we? What did we say, Joe? So we recommended the figure tonight here. The total for twenty eighteen to do Pinnaker Lake and the Garnet. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Garden, Miller Estates. And Miller Estates would be hundred would be two hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars, with not including anything being assessed. And here's your 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 twenty eighteen budget. Is that completed? It is completed, isn't it? Your levy, I mean. I'm sorry, your levy. The the the, preliminary, the levy can't go up, but you can we can do whatever we want with the money that's in there. If there's rearranging to be done. Okay. Money could more money could be put in. There's money that's been unspent that could be put in. There's so can we ask you as the liaison to take it up with the city council to move some money around to come up with the two hundred sixty nine thousand dollars for these two projects. We have it. Yeah, yeah. We have it. We have enough money. And by the so end, it is if, there. if nothing yeah. was done, I'm okay. just hypothetically okay. saying if nothing was done. Okay. Well, There's so, hundred eighty yeah. in cash now. Yep. And, and the, currently, there will be 200 levied for net for Three. put in there next year, so there'd be 380. Okay. So if we didn't assess anything, we'd be still ahead. What? 100. And you're still going to get the assessment money. Right. right. And then you're going to assess Eventually. money. Right. You're going to get some prepayments. You're going to yeah. get some first year payments by the yeah. time so, 19 rolls around. So that's around. our that's our starting point. Yep. So now let's build on that for 2019 and 2020 and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we, that's where honestly, if we had, okay, here's for 2018, here's the two, the, the two neighborhoods we want to do. For 2019, sure. here's what we want to do. Right. For 2020, right. here's what we want to do. And I also think it's important to get, get a couple of these smaller projects done. You know, in my experience, everyone hates paying taxes, but it's, it's better when you know that they're going, everyone likes roads. They like it. Smooth roads, you know, and so although it's pretty universal that no one likes paying taxes, most people are okay with paying taxes for roads. The problem that the council's in is, is they don't have, I mean, it's hard to raise the levy and get the support of the residents when they don't see the roads being improved yet. Right. So after you improve the roads, it, it might it's going to be a snowball effect where the residents are okay with a, another fifty or hundred thousand dollars per year, maybe even support it, you know. Um, 
So, so you're going to recommend the 2018 plan to the council? If it's passed. Well, you're going to recommend it. We're not done yet. We're still working on it. We're not done so, yet. So with, if, if I wanted to just clarify, so the motion right now is to do Pinnaker Lake and Miller Lake. The yep, yep. Garnet. Yep, okay. Garnet. Shane's saying it's about $1,000, $2,000 price difference if you're transporting from one spot to another spot. So realistically, it doesn't have to be. We have to be within X number of miles from one place to another. The mayor suggested, do we do one on the top and one on the north and one on the south and one on the west and then one on the east or just to spread them out so it's not just concentrated into one spot. So with that in mind, our... Are you still recommending that we do those two parcels for 2018? It would be nice to find one down south that is a high visible road, high traffic road. Like Krypton. Krypton's a dead end street. But I, I mean, mean yeah. 66 goes right, right by. I us. mean, that's something like Jeff was saying, you need something where people can see it. You yeah. get everybody driving by Cleary as the work's being right. on Cleary as the work's yeah. being done. Yeah, I can, yeah, that would be. Like you, like you said, it needs to be a high visible to make it work. So we could flip Zarnett Street for Krypton in 2018 if that was the desire of the committee. Well, I got a question for you. One north, one south. On Garnett Street, whenever we do do it, whatever year. Well, does that price include cash basins? If you said you had to raise them up, does that price include that? Yeah, it would include that. Okay. I mean, there's good valid points here with what everybody has said about that strategy. However, the Garnett and Miller Lake Estates, nobody's going to see that going on. It's off the beaten path. Uh, it's quiet up there. Yeah, pretty secluded. Pretty secluded. Yeah. Uh, I would say to just keep that the way it is and get it done. That's just my opinion. Mine too. Then next year we go somewhere else. People are going to hear that things are possibly happening. They're going to hear it at Bill's. They're going to hear it in church. They're going to hear it at the bar. You know, yeah. it's. They're probably going to hear it before they see it. That's right. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I got a question. I go on old Viking. This is off the beaten path. You're talking about the, all the rubber stuff on old Viking on these roads. What happens if you would seal coat them before you overlay them? Would that protect it? It does. They actually have a name for it. They call it the Texas Underseal. And that, that, that helps prevent the, the oil from bubbling up. Because the, the seal coat kind of confines it or whatever, holds it. Have you ever tried it? I have not. I just want to work. I've seal coated roads. I mean, I've, I've overlaid roads that have been seal coated, and of course, there's no problem doing that. But. Yeah, I, I had that problem in Credit River, and I know Craig from my office, he had a problem with a road either and stuff or unload. I just went for the work, I just... Yeah, yeah I, I read, uh, you know, there's all these local road reports about different things, and that was, uh, you know, these light reading for bedtime, there's about... 50 of those generated each year with their three million dollars. That's why we can't hit the population of 5,000 because of reports like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got three years left. All right. Yeah, so we're we're up to 2020. So now we need to oh okay. look at the year 2021. No, but um, you need to make uh, the motion to make. Huh? The motion to make. 2020. Yeah. We have. Yeah. All of them. Meadows, Alberti Valley. After we get down to Over here, and then we have Rolling Oaks. Rolling Hills. Very good. No. Rolling Oaks. Okay. Oh. There's a difference here. Look at it. 
Yeah, we could uh, we could consider Morton Farm Preserve also in 2020. That would we could put us at about 220, about 300 thousand for that year. That's probably right around where we want to be. So we're on the consensus on that. Sure. Let's put it together. So you've got two down on the north, two down on the south, one on the west, and two on the east down. So now we don't have to be as certain about our improvements because you know, you're going to look at this each and every year. And again, it's, it's the most certain generally the, the next year out. And as you get out to that five year period, it's kind of less certain. Um, I think at some point we want to get Rogers Lake area on the schedule. I don't know if that's in 2021 or 2022. I think it's both. I don't get it. Probably it's a two-year plan down there. I know we're just trying to do it. Yeah, it would be. Because that's not going to be an MSA. It's not going to be municipal state aid and... If you did that all as one project, it'd be a you know pretty big project in the neighborhood. Ripped up. That's why. You're talking about dividing up Rogers Lake. Yeah. yeah. Doing certain just certain stretches in it. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that at 21, 22 it finishes out the five-year plan, and you have to you probably have to patch. You know, you'll have to yeah. patch them throughout. You know, have to have more money. 2022? Yeah, 21, 22. 21, 22. So we would break it up and do like half of it in 2021, half of 2022. So. Okay, in 2018, where'd that come up to? 3, 301. Came up to 301. Can we throw uh, 218th in there? Off the gym? 20th and then the rest of the Yeah, it's here. Okay. So we, and then we're okay. focusing the entire year in this general area, which could be good or could be bad, and depending on where well, I'm just trying. <laughs> There's nothing down south, and it would. Yeah, there's nothing that, that, uh, that cheap. That cheap. And that's, and that's the next one that needs it. The, the tough part, too, about, about 218th is that stretch of Xenon isn't paved. Right. Yeah. And I, I had a, almost an identical situation, and the residents all came in and said, why the hell do you want to assess us to do an overlay on our local road? Get the road that we have to drive on paid first. That's no problem. Mm -hmm. Tell them to get their chip hook up. <clears throat> so what do you want to do? Include this Now, one? in Rogers Lake, you say in 2021, how much increase or percentage does that go up per year? you have any idea? Cost-wise? Yeah. yeah. The, there's a publication that follows yeah, that and does, that, 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 you know, that. follows a trend that's usually between three and five percent. Oh, that'd be more right. It, it, it really shoot, it really shot up when the price of the oil but, was yeah. up. Yeah. Oh right. Um, but now it's you know kind of back down again. So three percent would be twenty four grand a year, right? At eight hundred thousand. Yeah, so 3 to 5% a year. Right. Right. So 24 to 40,000 a year. But if the price of oil goes up, price of fuel goes up four or five bucks a gallon again. Right. Then we'll be looking at concrete to <laughs> do with us. <laughs> So that's five years. 
nothing until 2021 to 2022 is over 300,000 for those three years. And do we decide that we want to add in? Do we want to? Uh, 218? Next year? For what, what year? 218. I think Joe suggested 2018. I mean, I just think because we're in the neighborhood. Sure. Yeah, we are right there. Yep. So, Al, do you want to amend your motion to have it this five-year plan? And then we still have not looked at Garnett Street south of North Lake Road. Remember, I said that's in better shape than the, the rest of the roads. But I'd like to see it somewhere at the end of the five-year plan. So if we did that, say in, in 2022, is there be some consensus on that? So Pitley Curve is going to add in what now? 218th. 218th? Uh, yeah. Little yeah. section of Garnett Street. Is that going to Yeah. I mean, you're motioning it. <laughs> You think in 2022? I think that's good enough for. Let me ask you this question. All right, I think I already know the answer. <laughs> Old Viking, who will last in five years. It's going to get rougher and rougher. I mean, it's. it's you know, and that's that's the one problem with our plan. We've addressed most of the the local roads, but we, you know, we don't have any money to do old biking. Nothing for Jasper. Nothing to 185th, Clifton, and 187th. Um, <coughs> that, that's going back to your comment saying don't do the roads that are potentially MSA roads. Well, if I had the money, I would do them. I would do them, I'd do Jasper, I'd do Old Viking and Jasper probably next year. Uh, <coughs> I'd be hesitant about assessing, especially for Old Viking, because I don't think it's gonna, you know, that, that other road that I was talking about, it had all those ripples in it. Uh, they were kind of rough, but it actually kind of settled up after a couple years. So <coughs> now, a couple years later, it rides better than it did when they first overlaid it. Well, if you still coated that road first, would that took that out of it? Yeah, I think it helps. Yeah. But seal coating is 20, 25,000 a mile. There's three and a half miles. So just seal coating that road. Yeah, but the section, between, section between Cleary and 47, that's yeah, that's, that just was, one section of it's really bad. This was sliding. Yeah. And that the intersection of 47 is bad, but. Right. Yeah, sliding that wetland right in here. Right. But the rest of the road's not really bad. And that was redid. Right. In 92, 91. Yeah, but you know, the, the other thing is that it's, it's probably in that year that where they've been having the problems with the delamination, you know, right. mid 90s pavement. Yeah. And that's something that can't be predicted. That, that's a, it's been a pretty serious problem for, we have a lot of it in Andover, a lot of it in Brooklyn Park, Woodbury, kind of all over the, you know, all over the state. I, I went to, Friend's house in Shoreview, and, and his road had it pretty bad. Um, but that's if it was seal coated on a regular basis? Um, I don't know if it was on a regular basis. It just seemed to be roads that were constructed in the 90s and seal coated. But Woodbury had some, they, they had some almost brand new roads that they seal coated. All right. And they're only five years old. Those are blown up. Make your motion. No, I'm <laughs> uh, Going to amend my motion, adding 218th to Finnegar and Garnett. All in 
favor? That's uh, all right. Other questions, no. Shane? You got two more projects here where you got 1.5 inch bituminous overlay. Should these be two inch? Damn. Should we just have the motion be the five year plan? Well, you almost have two things. Um, no, Morton Farm yeah. Preserve, the roads are still in pretty good condition, so I'd only do an inch and a half there. Okay. And at Oak Pond, they're in good condition, I would do an inch and a half there. Okay. Right. I would use the two inch when they're, there's already some Here's what we're pattern seeing. tracking development, like up here in Penetra Lake, mm -hmm. or if it's a, a collector road like Old Lake. Well, yeah, Morton Farm Reserve, so does that include a that little is. path that goes back to the park or yeah, the first parking lot area? The you no, yeah, right. Is that all eyes on that motion? I. You made it a motion to amend the motion. I did. Okay, so Ten all seconds. you're voting on is to amend it. Yeah, but you never finished.